So we violinists are very good at classifying things, and vibrato often gets classified in very rigid categories. We've got the arm vibrato, and the wrist vibrato, and the finger vibrato. Uh, the fact is that in a proper vibrato, lots of things are moving. Lots of things should be flexible. Um, it's true that different people uh, may create the vibrato impulse using the whole arm, as I do mostly. Others initiate it more from the wrist, and other people talk about a finger vibrato. And the truth is that all of those things should be flexible. Um, many of you will have already learned vibrato, and I'm not interested in changing the type of vibrato you use. So the thing to remember, uh, and a weakness that I see in many people, is the flexibility of that last joint, the finger joint. Because no matter what kind of vibrato you use, the last, well, the only thing that contacts the string is the finger. So if the finger is rigid, there's no kind of vibrato that's going to sound satisfying or that's going to be supple or variable. So instead of rigid, this last joint, it's flexible. That should be true on all the four fingers. Now vibrato all, only decorates a note from below. Vibrato should never rise above the note. So if I'm playing a D, the vibrato should only just come up to the D and then go back. That's because the human ear tends to hear a vibrated note as the highest pitch that's reached. So if you go above that D, the audience is going to pick it up as a note above D. So two things that you always strive for with vibrato, the ability to have a continuous vibrato. That doesn't mean that you necessarily vibrate all the time or vibrate every note, but you have to be able to when you want to. One of the worst habits in string playing is the dreaded dead note, uh, singing lines that have a sudden note without vibrato. And we usually do that on certain fingers. Maybe it's first finger or fourth finger, or we do it right before a shift or as the last note of a slur. You want to always be on guard, be using your ears, so that you can play continuous vibrato when you want. One finger hands off to the next. It's also very important as you progress to be able to vary the speed of your, of your vibrato. If you listen to any of the great soloists, they all have very different speeds for their vibratos. There may be a slower, more relaxed one for a, you know, a wide, for a, a romantic concerto. But if that same piece were to get more intense, the vibrato might speed up, it might get more narrow. That's something that's hard to do without the tools of the trade. A metronome is very useful for forcing you out of your comfort zone, because let's face it, each of us has a comfortable vibrato speed, a sort of default vibrato, and that's fine, just like each of us has our own voice. But you need to be able to get out of that comfortable speed and to try all speeds. So I'm gonna put the metronome on at uh, 60, And I'm gonna practice counting my little vibrato wiggles. Let's say I uh, use the third finger. I'm gonna have one up and one down for every click of the metronome. And now I'll do three, well, up, down, up during one click of the metronome. Now you'll hear me go through four, five, six, and so forth. Now eight. Now it's starting to feel like a real vibrato. 
Um, since it's harder to count a lot more than eight in one click of the metronome, if I want to get it faster, I would put the metronome up, let's say, to 72. Now I'll quickly work up starting from two again. That's getting close to my default speed. So what would be useful for me would be now to just bump the metronome up a little bit. So you're working all kinds of speeds. You're working speeds 60, 72, but also because of the divisions, you're working all the ones in between. It's important not to accumulate tension when you're doing this. It's okay to go a little faster than your comfort zone, but you don't want to stay there too long. You give it a rest, do it again another day. But this is a way that you can control all the speeds in between and it'll really pay dividends later on. So, when you send me a video of your vibrato, go ahead and turn on the metronome and show me divisions of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8, and then put the metronome to a different speed and do the same thing. If you're really the tech type, you can find a recording of your favorite soloist, turn on the metronome, slow the recording down if you have to, and figure out what their vibrato speed is. You may be surprised that you have the same default speed as one of your favorite soloists, and then when you expand that range, you'll be able to open up all the colors that they do.